Thanks to Dashlane for supporting this video. Tesla has quietly acquired a battery manufacturing company called Hybar Systems based in Ontario, Canada. This is the second battery acquisition of Tesla in a year. This is Hybar Systems' website before acquisition, and here is after. The attempt at secrecy is obvious. So since we have some information regarding the company, why don't we try to understand Tesla's strategy here? The first thing to notice on the old website is that it's available in three different languages aside from English, Korean, Chinese, and German. This obviously isn't a coincidence. A company wouldn't translate its website into different languages if they don't have customers in those countries. South Korea and China have the world's leading battery makers, LG Chem, Samsung SDI from South Korea, and BYD and CATL from China. Germany is the world's top car manufacturing country, so there is no surprise here as well. However, considering the fact that Tesla is reportedly signing a battery deal with LG Chem in China, this acquisition of Hybar Systems become more intriguing. So far, we have not discussed Hybar Systems technologies. There aren't many press coverings for Hybar Systems, but looking at the information available from its old websites, what we do know is that it manufactures the following systems. Precision dispensing pumps and filling systems, complex high-speed integrated battery assembly lines, high-performance custom-engineered packaging systems, and automated assembly systems. Therefore, the sense I've got from these words is that Hybar has proprietary, world-leading technologies that can help Tesla build its own battery manufacturing and assembly lines. Tesla has been partnering with external battery makers to manufacture batteries. In Gigafactory 1 Nevada, Panasonic controls the battery manufacturing part, and Tesla focuses on packaging and assembly. But with Hybar's technology and design know-how, Tesla now has the capability to manufacture its own batteries. This is also consistent with Tesla's LG partnership in Shanghai, China in its new Gigafactory, effectively confining its Panasonic partnership to within the United States. Also, there has not been a formal announcement of the LG deal in Shanghai. It is entirely possible that Tesla and LG is working on a structure that gives Tesla more control in battery production, especially now that it has Hybers technology. Now, one thing that many asked me is whether or not Tesla can completely abandon its battery partners after the Maxwell and Hyper Systems acquisition. The answer is no. There's no way that Tesla can produce lithium-ion batteries without its internal partners for a very simple reason. Tesla does not own many of the technology around battery making. Here is the ranking of patent owners around the world. As you can see, Tesla is no way near the top. LG Chem, Samsung SDI, Panasonic, and BYD are among the highest ranking patent applicants. What does that mean? It means Tesla has to either work with one of those companies as it did before with Panasonic, or it has to license technologies from those high ranking patent owners to make the systems work. Obviously, the latter requires a lot more resources. Therefore, my prediction is that Tesla will continue to work with its partners to manufacture batteries moving forward. Another signal out of Tesla's new battery acquisition is Tesla actively trying to solve the weakest link to its production line, battery manufacturing. Comparing to the investment into Maxwell Technologies, Hybar Systems' investment is much more pragmatic and could potentially reap benefit in the near term. Hybar Systems makes, designs, and customizes machines that manufacture lithium-ion batteries, improving its efficiency and performance. From a supply chain standpoint, in order to make an EV, the critical components are material production, battery manufacturing, battery pack manufacturing, engine manufacturing, car manufacturing, and then marketing, sales, and delivery. Along this whole supply chain, there are first tier and second tier suppliers who provide critical components to the production such as air conditioning from Continental and wheel bearings from NSK. Tesla doesn't produce everything, but it does have a highly vertically integrated supply chain. This shows the ownership of Tesla's supply chain. Very little control was given to the outside partners. By taking higher control in battery manufacturing with high bar systems, Tesla would have higher control in quality and speed of production. Hopefully, this can solve Tesla's production issues. Lastly, there are many promising signs coming out of China, and the new battery strategy is probably not unrelated. China's strategic value to Tesla has increased dramatically in the past year. Not only is China the biggest market of Tesla outside the United States, it is predicted to grow much faster. I would not be surprised if Tesla sells more cars in China than the United States a few years down the road, for a very simple reason. 
the Chinese government has removed all hurdles for EV growth, whereas there are a lot of interest groups in the United States that would hate to see more EV sales. Tesla is the only company I know that the Chinese government singled out and exempted its tariffs. Coming back to Tesla's new battery strategy, as Tesla builds a new factory from scratch in Shanghai, it makes a lot of sense to integrate the Maxwell technologies and harbor systems directly into production line, solving some dire production problems Tesla is facing. It is worth noting that in the first half of 2019, Tesla made $1.47 billion in China despite the high tariffs oftentimes hiking up the price of base Model 3 to $70,000, which is only $35,000 in the United States. We have already seen 40% growth in the sales after the tariff exemption, considering the completion of Shanghai Gigafactory and perhaps the integration of the new battery manufacturing technologies from Haibar. My prediction is that we will be seeing the strongest growth for Tesla in 2020. As I was making this video, there was another change to Highbar's website. It is no longer secretive, but by looking at its products publicized now, it does not mention its high-speed battery assembly lines, custom packaging systems, as well as its automated assembly systems anymore. This means Highbar no longer sells those capabilities to the outside. The team will fully focus on Tesla's future production lines instead. Tesla's recent announcement of its software version 10 also doubles down on its Chinese market potentials, showing special attention to its Chinese customers by integrating some uniquely Chinese software. A lot of actions will be seen in Tesla's new Chinese venture. I'd be very excited to see the integration of Maxwell Technologies and Hybar Systems into Tesla's future business. Another acquisition of Tesla is DeepScale, a perceptual system for autonomous vehicles. This is a very exciting investment that was made recently. Perhaps this could be the topic for the next video. But before we embark on exploring the software systems behind Tesla's autonomous technology, it is important for us to be aware of the cyber threats we experience today with more smart devices in our lives. That's why I'm recommending Dashlane. Dashlane is the only tool you need to stay safe online. With Dashlane's patented encryption storage system, not only can you update and manage your passwords easily from all your devices, you can be sure that when a data breach happens that threatens the safety of your online identity, Dashlane will keep you informed so you can rectify the situation right away. Additionally, Dashlane provides a VPN service that hides your online identity when using public or untrusted Wi-Fi networks, an extremely useful feature that I use all the time. Click on the link down below to get a free trial of Dashlane Premium for 30 days. And if you like it, Dashlane offered audiences a special 10% discount off Dashlane Premium with the code CuriousElephant. Definitely try it out today.